Hi there, everybody. I'm Michael Valenti with the School of Self-Defense here with my wife, Amanda, and we just saw the Yip Man film, and this is going to be our little movie review about it. Quick background about us. I am the founder and head instructor of the School of Self-Defense, where we actually teach Wing Chun, which is kind of what this movie is all about. In addition to that, we also teach Jeet Kune Do, which is in this movie, as well as CDS and Judo and Kali, which isn't in this movie at all. Um, my wife, she actually does a little bit of Wing Chun, but her primary focus is actually Jeet Kune Do and CDS. She's got a black belt in CDS. So that kind of gives you an idea of where we're coming from when it comes to this movie. The way we're going to do this review is we're gonna first talk about the plot, and then we're gonna cover what we thought was good, what was bad, and what was interesting, and then end it with our final thoughts. So let's go ahead and get into it. So a quick recap for those of you who maybe haven't seen the movie in a second or um, have lost track of the multiple plot lines, because honestly, this movie is all over the place plot wise. So Donnie Yen goes to America to find a school for his son where he meets an entire like board of grand masters of all of the Kung Fu schools in Chinatown. Uh, and they don't like him because he trained Bruce Lee who is now training people who are not Chinese. So there's kind of the first plot point. Plot point number one. So the daughter of one of these grand masters is going to the school that Yip Man wants his son to go to. And she's being bullied badly for race conflict kind of stuff in the area and she's trying to kind of discover herself and separate herself from her father's wishes for her to do tai chi and her desire to do american cheerleading that's plot point number two that's number two so plot point number three is actually that one of bruce lee's students is trying to incorporate chinese martial arts into the american military training and he is being met with opposition from two white guys who study Japanese karate, uh, one, the drill sergeant and the current combatives instructor or whatever, their sensei who is there, uh, who decide to prove that Chinese martial arts doesn't fit into the American military, that they're going to kick the ass of every Chinese martial arts grandmaster in Chinatown. And we'll get more into that at the end of this video. So let's talk about the good parts about this movie. For me, undeniably, it is the fight choreography. This is a movie for Kung Fu movie fans. If you love Bruce Lee movies, if you love the Pass Yip Man movies, if you love Wire Fu, all of that is really well represented in this movie with a lot of nods to kind of the history of Kung Fu cinema. For sure, the fighting in this movie is top notch, really, really cool. And I'll get more into kind of how accurate it is later, but I will definitely say as far as the entertainment factor is concerned, the fight choreography in this movie is awesome. So something I really enjoyed about the movie, besides the fight choreography, were some of the more movie elements of it really pleasantly surprised me. Uh, for example, Donnie Yin's performance yeah. was really incredible. He not only showed us all of that awesome fight choreography, but then he had a lot of deeper connections with his son or more emotional moments throughout the movie that I think he portrayed really, really well. Another thing that really pleasantly surprised me about the movie was the cinematography is there were beautiful shots. There was a lot of good tight angles. And then during the fights, there was also the wide angles that we kind of wanted to be able to see that fight sequence. And the pacing was actually pretty spot on for what I wanted. I never found myself disinterested, but I never found myself overwhelmed by just too much action coming at me at the same time. All right, so let's talk about the bad parts of this movie. Where does this movie fail? And I've got a couple points as well as you have a couple points in which this movie didn't quite resonate with us and for me the first one that comes to mind is the historical accuracy I don't expect movies to be historically accurate but when you make a movie about a actual figure in history it kind of begs for the script to at least have something to do with the actual historical person whereas the vast majority of the things that happen in this movie aren't just sort of historically inaccurate they just didn't happen this is undeniably a fictional version of Ip Man. Think about this as Ip Man as a superhero, not the historical figure that actually existed. For me, the biggest area where this movie missed is something that maybe some viewers won't even notice, and that's the relationship between what happens in the movie and the theming of the movie. The movie's theme seems to be that Chinese martial arts is superior to all other kinds of martial arts. This is very much a Chinese culture pride film. 
However, if you actually watch the movie Fight for Fight, it basically is the non-Chinese martial arts beating the shit out of everybody who knows Chinese martial arts except for Yip Man who can suddenly magically beat them. What this results in is the Chinese martial arts actually looking very inferior to non-Chinese martial arts and Yip Man just appearing more to be a superhero as opposed to a representation of Chinese culture and Chinese strength. So while I really enjoyed the pacing of the movie, I felt like the plot itself left a little bit to be desired. It played out a little closer to what I thought of as the story mode on a fighting game. And if you've ever played something like Mortal Kombat, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about, where the reasons they were getting into these fights seemed a little bit arbitrary. And for somewhat the same reason, I felt like they asked me to suspend my disbelief pretty frequently throughout the movie and maybe asking me to suspend it and like, oh, would a person actually act like this on a street? Or could somebody take that many hits and get back up? Which felt pretty video gamey as well. I suppose my last note on where this movie kind of fails, and it's really kind of what prevents this movie from being an outstanding film, is while Donnie Yen's performance is really good and many of the Chinese actors' performance is really good, to be honest, most of the white people's performances are pretty stilted or cartoonish or like super villainous, like a video game villain. So... It does pull me out of it a little bit when you have an actor as good as Donnie Yen standing across someone who is just chewing the scenery. So let's move on to what was interesting about the movie, not really good or bad. And one thing I found interesting was the portrayal of Bruce Lee. He was portrayed a little bit more like he was in his movies than maybe he was as the actual historical person. For example, we saw in some of his fight choreography, parts of it were lifted directly from some of his movies that we saw the exact same movements. And I think a lot of Bruce Lee fans probably saw those similarities when they were watching. Uh, whereas we know historically, he actually fought in a much different style than what he would use for those flashier bits in his movies. So while we've mentioned probably 18 times throughout this video that it's not historically accurate, one of the things I found very interesting about this movie was the little nods to the history of martial arts in the 60s. For example, they portrayed the famous demonstration of Bruce Lee at the Long Beach Karate Tournament. When it comes to the history of modern martial arts, many people kind of point to that Long Beach demonstration as effectively the match that lit the fuse that became mixed martial arts in the future. Also, as Wing Chun practitioners, one of the most precious documents that we have is actual footage of Yip Man doing the Silam Tao, the Chum Q, working the wooden dummy. It serves as a phenomenal reference to us so that we can make sure that what we are doing is historically accurate to what Yip Man was doing way back then. And nearing the end of the film, they once again kind of show that footage being made, but of course with Donnie Yen as opposed to the original figure. The final interesting thing for me was the representation of a vast array of Chinese martial arts. So when it comes to the representation of Chinese martial arts in most movies, you basically are going to get three representatives. You're going to get Wing Chun, Shaolin Kung Fu, and what we call wire fu, wire work. However, in this movie, a wide array of Chinese martial arts is represented. We have Tai Chi, we have Praying Mantis, White Crane. So each of these arts have a master associated with them that each get their own little moment in the spotlight during the various fights throughout the film. So my final thoughts on the movie. I think it was really, really good. Yeah. I enjoyed it. Despite being a little nitpicky about where I thought it had me suspend my disbelief a little too much, out of five, I would give it 3.5. I think the fight choreography and the general just kind of pacing kept it really exciting and brought it above that three point mark for me. But I don't think it quite hits a four just because of some of those plot issues I had where it felt video gamey. Ultimately, this is a movie for Kung Fu fans. If you like Kung Fu movies, you're gonna love this movie. If you've always hated Kung Fu movies, you're gonna hate this movie. It's pretty simple, it's as cut and dry as that. For me, if I were to give this score a score out of five, I'd give it 3.5 just like you did. It's definitely more than a three because of Donnie Yen's outstanding performance and the kick-ass fights throughout the entire movie. But the things that are holding it back are the bad acting of the supporting cast and the kind of disjointed plot that 
really just serves the purpose of getting more fights on screen. For those of you who live in Indianapolis and would be interested in studying some of the martial arts featured in this film, such as Wing Chun and Jeet Kune Do, we actually teach it at our school, the School of Self-Defense. All the information to get signed up can be found at our website, theschoolofselfdefense.com. Of course, links will be in the description. So until next time, everybody, I'm Michael Valenti. This is my wife, Amanda. Fight on.